to the second webinar session organized by the Philippine Society for Quality. Again, we are live via Facebook and YouTube. How are you, PSQ Nation? Hope everything is doing well with you and your family members. Are you excited on today's session? Please type in, in the comment box, excited, if you are looking forward to learning about continuous improvement. Now let's see whether your excited messages are coming in. Okay, very nice. So prior to the learning presentation, good afternoon to fellow PSQ, wow, and that's a new term, PSQ ones. <laughs> Hi, I'm Alan Aranzazu. Good afternoon, everyone. And okay, Helen Garcia, hello, good afternoon to you too. We also have Van Chu Mabuhay, Philippine Society for Quality. Hi, Ma'am Olivia Aller, good afternoon from FU Alabang. Hi, Ma'am Aini. Good afternoon to you. A pleasant afternoon, one of our Board of Trustees members. And excited, that's what I want to see. Noki, Marilyn, they are excited. Similar with Jean and Laarni. Hi, Ma'am Laarni, Ian, Romero. They are excited to learn about continuous improvement. But prior to the learning presentation, please watch this video about Philippine Society for Equality. <laughs> Are very lucky to have an expert to discuss the topic on continuous improvement and I'm very humbled to present to you our research speaker. He is a passionate continuous improvement practitioner for over 18 years. He is a Six Sigma Black Belt certified by Hitachi. He is a certified Master Black Belt Lean Six Sigma professional from the University of the Philippines. And during his 12 years of experience in Hitachi, he managed, trained, coached, facilitated, and contributed to the knowledge and growth of couples of individuals in Lin Sig Sigma. And he has expertise handling several cross-functional teams from both manufacturing and commercial processes, including production, quality, services, inventory, supply chain, commercial operations, sales, and marketing. Currently, he is a Corporate Continuous Improvement Director at Xylem Water Systems International Incorporated. He acts as the driver of change within the region, understanding Lean Six Sigma methodology, Lean Manufacturing, and Lean Management System. He is a Kaizen facilitator in leading for continuous improvement for the senior leadership team and has facilitated a lot of several a lot of kaizen events across the company from asia america and europe and he is a lin six sigma deployment champion he acts as a change agent in regional wide deployment to develop employees and helping them to learn and adopt the lin six sigma transformation of the business ladies and gentlemen please welcome our resource speaker engineer lloyd r Sese. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Hello, thank you, Dr. San, for your wonderful introduction. So, yeah, let's let's get started. I'm excited uh, today to to meet all of you and uh, to share the the passion and continuous improvement journey that we have in Silent. Can you see my screen? Are we good? Can you see my screen? Yes, sir, Lloyd. We're good. We saw your screen, sorry, sorry. Okay, 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 okay. All right, sure, sure. Thank you. 
Okay, so again, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for having me today. Uh, water is very important to human body. Every one of your cells, organs, tissues uses water to help with, with the temperature regulations, keeping you hydrated, and maintaining the bodily function. In addition, water acts as a lubricant and cautions your joint. So drinking water is great to your overall health. Uh, one of the Chinese classics texts that I really like is uh, Tao Te Ching. It says that uh, the supreme goodness is like water. It benefits all things without contention. And this is our mission. This is Xylem. Uh, again, thank you for the opportunity to tell you about Xylem and continuous improvement and the exciting step moving forward that we are taking over for the past years to build continuous improvement and leading edge solutions and how we can harness and drive the power of continuous improvement culture in this challenging time. So uh, I was introduced earlier, uh, these are my credentials, but I really don't want to spend more, more time on this. What I'm really proud of as a uh, continuous improvement practitioner is uh, everything that I do, everything that the reason why, why I probably brave enough to talk here in front of everyone is it's not about those credentials, but it's all about my passion on continuous improvement. Having the ability to share the knowledge and skills and improving the quality of life of people around me. This is, this is where my obsessions comes in. So I'm obsessed in Lean Six Sigma. I apply the tools, concept, and lesson learned not only to my work, but to my life, my health, my family. And basically, I'm practicing this 24-7. So let me give you an overview of what is Xylem before I start uh, and what is the challenges, what are challenges that we are facing right now. Water is vital to our planet, to human life, economic development, and, so, and, and societal growth. So it's a critical component in vital processes from food production and energy production to business supply chain, and it's the key sustainability uh, for our future. So water is... a uh, Water consumption is estimated to double every 20 years. But at the same time, the global supply of fresh water continues to decline. And in many parts of the world, water systems are aging and overburdened. Between 20 to 30% of the world water will lose before it reaches its intended destination. And much of that is due to the leaking pipes and faulty inf infrastructures. It also has an industrial pollution, agricultural runoff, and nutrients overload. So these are placing a significant strain on our global water system and water-related natural disasters, such as, uh, of course, we are very much familiar with typhoons, droughts, flooding, are, are very common, especially here in the Philippines. So this is just, uh, this is just uh, the four things that uh, water makes it so challenging. But now, with the new technologies, with the offering and bold ways on protecting and optimize water, we have the opportunity of a lifetime to help the world and become water secure. And Xylem is actually the, one, the company that leading that way. At Xylem, we have, we have made the pledge. Our pledge is let's solve water. We try to help create a world where water issue is no longer a barrier to human health, prosperity and sustainability development. And water is more accessible, affordable, and safer for, for all. And we are uniquely positioned and drive transformation across water and smart infrastructure sectors. We have a global scale, a heritage trust and reliability, and we offer an industry of leading portfolio of powerful solution that fuse digital and uh, proven uh, technology with heritage product to help and solve the water and smart infrastructure, infrastructure challenges of the world. Our products actually serve span the entire cycle of water. So when you when you see water anywhere you go, there's xylem. Xylem is a is from the watershed to public utility to the end user and back again as we move as we move treat track and transform water. So we transport water to where it needs to be. We treat water so it is clean. We track and analyze the op and optimize the entire water and wastewater network. And we transform how to run uh, the asset uh, of, or overcoming the, the, the challenges. So we help water managers solve their toughest water challenges. Now, let me give you a closer look of how continuous improvement 
transform our organization to its potential. So the key in driving continuous improvement is the culture. But before I, before I go through my presentation, I would like to share you a short video of uh, how we understand the power of continuous improvement in our organization. We're on a journey to make continuous improvement a cultural mindset across the entire company and to empower everyone to look for ways to make things work out better. CI is critically important to helping us work more efficiently and productively. It's helping improve our customers' experiences with Xylem, making it easier for our colleagues to do their jobs, and also generating savings we can then reinvest for growth in areas like innovation. Our CI program is focused on a purpose for change, common processes everyone can follow, and people committed to solving problems. For us, continuous improvement has three key ingredients. First is around the purpose. And we tend to look at the customer being the true north. And that's really going to guide all the changes we can make. Listen to customers is becoming the basis of continuous improvement. If we can show that the customer ends up getting better served as a result of this, that's something that employees can buy into. The second ingredient is around the process. How do we go about making the change? The CI process uh, really gets everyone in their room looking at the process end to end. And the CI toolkit is really important for us to adopt as we start to build out those interfaces and those collaborations to avoid misunderstanding and unlock the power of one company. When we work in a world where seconds equate to dollars in product, it's critical that anything that we can do to make our processes more efficient is going to make us more sustainable and more competitive. I like to find new ways to make things smarter and to see new improvements and new ways to do things better, both for us and for the customer. We are chasing for endless waste elimination journey to create more value to our customers. CI can be applied to any process, not just manufacturing. Any process that needs a well-defined goal purpose can be applied. So by taking out waste, we free up resources, whether they're human resources or financial resources, that we can go and invest in other growth-oriented areas. I can't think of you know a better way to approach this than leveraging the CI toolkit available. And then the third ingredient is around people. CI has helped me to evolve as a team leader by giving me the opportunity to receive uh, training as a lean practitioner. We're constantly improving every area here. We're doing 2Ss, Kaizen. I see people actually getting excited about the movement that's happening right now in Xylem. Anybody across the facility can, can incorporate CI in any capacity. And if we're doing it right, it should make everyone's jobs easier. Because it removes obstacles and improves the quality of life here at Xylem being that you can see the entire process and not only the job that you're sitting at your desk with. Sen jag förbättringar och framförallt lean har spelat en väldigt stor roll för mig. Jag har fått många verktyg att jobba med som hjälper mig har hjälpt mig i många olika situationer. det har också hjälpt mig att förstå hur ett företag fungerar i sin helhet. Our primary goal is to enable every single employee to actively participate in solving problems, whether small, big, uh, and let them deliver sustainable actions with the support of continuous improvement and lean tools. Be open to learning, uh, give it a try, start small with tools that matter in your job, and you'll see all the difference in the world. Every colleague should engage in CI because we, we strive to be better, and if we don't move forward, we're always going to be in the same place. Everyone can benefit from it. The opportunities are endless. All right. So, uh, all right. So, continuous improvement is one of the five pillars of Xylem. So, as you as you've learned from the video, everything we do links to purpose, process, and people. And that's the starting point of the implementation of continuous improvement. It's all about lean. It's a concept of value and how we maximize it to our customer. Like our assemblers in one of our manufacturing plants knows that his job is not just to assemble pumps, but to deliver a quality of pumps based on the customer specification. 
Just like a service crew in a fast food restaurant that should understand the value of providing fast service and quality food to her customer, if you're an F1 driver, you should understand that you need to win the race, you need to finish the race and win it. And everyone of us should learn the value of existence in the eyes of our customer. So know your customer, understand what they want, and deliver the value to them. Once we know the value, the next step is finding where it is being created. There is no other place than Gemba. Uh, I, I'm not sure if everyone are familiar with, with that word. It's, uh, it's actually a Japanese word, which means the actual place. Uh, in the Lean practice, Gemba refers to the place where the value is being created. And it's always compared to, a, I always I like to compare Gemba to a crime scene. Uh, when, when, you, when you want to gather evidences, you go to the crime scene to, effect, to effectively solve the case. So this is the reason why at Asylum, Gemba is a place for improvement. Before the pandemic, actually, our meeting room in Asylum are useless because every time we have a problem, we do not sit down in the meeting room, but rather we solve it in the actual place where it happened. So if you are from the manufacturing line, you go to the production and solve the problem. If you're if you're if your location uh, where the product is being, if, if you are the uh, engineering or pro project engineering, we go to the location where the product is being installed, and uh, we go to our distributors and clients. Uh, if you are from sales or marketing, and this is our gamba. This is how we work every day, and this is how we show the value to to our everyday. Uh, process and to our customers. So driving continuous improvement culture should not be affected by the challenging time. So we all know that uh, during the time that right now we are in the pandemic, um, probably some of the company have started to stop some of the activities that they are doing for continuous improvement. But in Asylum, it, we treat it differently. So at Asylum, we are committed to carrying our mission of continuous improvement in order to survive and prosper through the coming storm. So instead of going into uh, with us, uh, instead of going to some resignation or to face a bad, when we are facing a bad economy, we actually charge forward. We determine to improve and to do more with less. So the continuous improvement determination will always pay off. Actually for the past years uh, during the pandemic, our business is still strong. We did not suffer too much. Every department found creative ways to cut spending while still finding improvements. And because sometimes we, we, we all believe that sometimes money suffocates creativity. And this is our opportunity to really show how creative are, are we and how serious are we in terms of continuous improvement. In a new world, they say that it's not the big fish that eats the small fish. It is the fast fish that eats the big fish. So probably right now, if I will ask you, have you, have you, can you recall any big company before that probably not existing right now? So probably some of you can can identify few company like uh, Kodak, uh, Motorola, uh, and, and and other big company which are which, which are really big before. The question is, are are they not innovative enough? Because when we talked about Kodak, for example, it's all about uh I, I i when you when you talk about kodak they are actually very innovative actually they are the one who started the digital camera but i think the problem is more on the sustainability and the question of are they fast enough so this is really the topic that i would like to talk about and i would like to share with you in terms of the of talking about the physical motion of progress in continuous improvement and and what I'm going to share today is not actually, I'm not going to lecture the team, but what I would like to share is to show you how we are doing it in Xylem. So learning the art of creating speed, speed, or I call it the waste elimination, defining velocity, where we call it the value stream, growth acceleration, which talks about our Kaizen and, le and Lean leadership, are the main factors of this uh, organization. So understanding the lean ecosystem as a key system in driving continuous improvement culture and developing this core principle, wherein a small team of people 
throughout the entire organization are coming together each day and trying to figure out how we can do better today. That's the philosophy. That's, that's, that's what we are trying to establish in our organization. Or probably, I assume all of you here are very much familiar with the eight ways. Some other call it seven ways. I don't know if there's a nine ways or 10 ways, but at the, at the end, it, it all boils down to the ways that we are experiencing every day. Waste is everywhere. Everything you do, anywhere you go, it's there. At the moment, I'm talking to you right now, you're probably experiencing a couple of ways. Your connection probably suddenly cut off and you cannot hear me or you cannot see my presentation, so we have a defect. Probably you feel that I'm talking too much right now and I'm creating an overproduction waste for you. Or the webinar is taking too long to finish and uh, there's still some tasks waiting for you for, the, for, 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 for your next activity for the day and so on and so on. So I always look at the ways, not only on the things that I do at work, but in every day, I, but in my everyday life. So we have defect, overproduction, waiting, non-utilized skills, transportation, inventory, motion, and extra processing. It is, so, but I would like to, when we, when we talked about ways I mentioned about it is everywhere, it is actually present in your product that from the time you build it until you ship it to your customer. It is in the service that you provided to your client and it is in your life that dragging you to move forward. You, some, people, some of us probably can still move on and because there's a lot of ways that is going on. So let, let's try to make this a little bit fun. I always remember eight ways as how uh, Paul Akers, the author of Two Seconds Lean, described it. And I just made it a few additional concepts uh, that I would like to share to everyone. When, when we talked about eight ways and we talked about what, uh, when it comes to eight ways, what, what is the worst among these ways or what is the evil among all these ways? And uh, if you go to the, some books and even in the, in, in, in you try to do some research, they will always talk about overproduction as the evil of all ways. And to share, but I, and I, I actually agree with that. And to show you how this overproduction actually creates a multiple uh, levels of ways, I, 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 I would like to show to you an illustration of how overproduction affects the whole cycle of a process when talking about a product. So let's see a ways in terms of a restaurant or a fast food. So when we talk, when we talked about overproduction, for this it's a pizza parlor which overproduce a pizza for the day. So the next day is they need to transport this to another location since the kitchen can only occupy quantity for the day. Then they have to increase the inventory since it's too much and it will not serve it. Can, it will not be served immediately, and it's not fresh since it's already an inventory. It, it's not fresh, and then it becomes cold. And now it doesn't, the customer doesn't like it. So now you have a defect. So what you're going to do, instead of throwing it out, you're going to rework it. You're going to create a lot of extra processing. You reheat it and uh, you, you, you try to serve it to your customer. And doing that, you are actually creating a lot of extra motion because this is not your standard process flow. You are trying to do a lot of extra processing that delivers a lot of motion to, to the process. And since, uh, and, and since the customer is still waiting because of all the extra processing that you have done, and you will observe that all your employees are working so busy so to satisfy the angry customer. And then you have a lot of unutilized skills. And the problem will become a cycle, and it will result to more frustration to the customers. So this waste can happen every time. This waste can happen one at a time. But uh, what this illustration is showing you is how overproduction can really multiply into the different types of waste. Now, let's talk about service. Uh, showing the same illustration, when we talked about service, uh, I actually missed this. I, I actually missed traveling. So from before the pandemic, I, I had a chance to travel a lot. And one of the things that I always observe every time I travel, when, when you go to the check-in counter, 
you will you will be given a, a boarding pass or all the information on your travel is there so sometimes i always find this boarding pass as overproducing of information so what will happen is for example i did not properly understand all the informations that is written in that boarding pass i would probably realize that i mistakenly look at the time of the uh, flight and then then i need to transport fast as fast as i can to go to the uh, gate in order to catch the plane and then since most of the people are like me doesn't understand where the gates are so we are being accumulated in some areas going back and forth and we are creating an inventory of people and then eventually that the my, my my flight left so i was now now i have a defect since i i was not able to go to the flight and at that at the next step that i'm going to do is to do some extra processing i will probably look for rebooking i'll try to go for the next flight and i'll try to fill up all the forms that i have filled up before and i'm doing extra motion and then i need to wait for another day for that flight so now i'm waiting instead of i'm already in the meeting uh, i'm already in the place where i need i supposed to have a meeting or probably take my vacation then i am not utilized skills and the more i get frustrated so this is how the overproduction of information started when it comes to transactional ways or or service uh or the or, or service process when it comes to uh creating ways by overproducing information so i always remind my team never overproduce information just be straightforward to whatever instruction information you want to say to make it simple and make the process run smoothly okay then we have the third one i talk about the product i talk about the service now let's talk about life when it comes to life uh let's take an example that i piece off my wife because i'm not really listening very closely at and to and i overproduce a bunch of negative emotion with her so what will happen next she asked me to transport and get away in front of her so she doesn't want to see me and then she told she tells me uh, i mean uh, she, and then all this pain that i have uh, created for her becomes an inventory that really pain pain her and now suddenly he will tell me that uh, after i try to console her and explain to her why i screwed up so badly but uh, it only makes worse and he will tell me it's over so now i have a defect and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump in my car to try to figure out where I could possibly buy something, maybe flour, candies, chocolates, or, or any, anything to get her back. So now I'm doing an extra processing to court her again, all this extra motion to, make, to, 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 to win her again. And then I have no other choice. I need to wait for her to, I need to wait for her to take the decision to accept me again. And there, I have a lot of CI projects that has now been on hold for over three days while I'm trying to fix my issue with my life. And then eventually, I I was not able to utilize my skills and I become non-productive for the rest of the weeks or months. So, and then it becomes a frustration. So, by the way, I, I should I, I should mention from the first uh, for the first time that. Uh, I should make a disclaimer that this is not a real story. So I'm still a happily married uh, person. So this is just an, an example to show you how ways can affect everything we do. It's not about product. It's not about service. It's also about your life. Okay. So once you set that speed in eliminating waste, the velocity shall follow. So we talked about uh, removing waste to your process in order to create the speed. Now we talked about the velocity. The difference between speed and velocity is the clear magnitude of direction. So in continuous improvement, the strategy, uh, uh, the strategy is, is speed is can be useless if the people and function or even the department don't understand the direction. So it's like you are traveling in a 200 kilometer per hour going to Pampanga, where in fact you need to go to Batangas. So, and it, it also has the reason why a lot of company failed in a lean implementation because they just follow a pattern without understanding 
what is the direction that they need to follow. So this is how velocity makes a big difference. Mapping your value stream is our key to define the velocity. So all the steps in both value add and non-value add required to take the product or service from raw materials to the waiting arm of the customer are always the activity that required to transform customer requests into a goods of service. These are always uh, the activity that we are doing in Xylem in order to start increasing our velocity or developing our strategy. I actually look at a value stream as literally as a map. So when you visit a country for the first time, the first thing you want to do is uh, grab a map uh, for you to explore it. And you try to locate in the map probably where you are, probably in the airport. And then where do you want to go? You will be going to the hotel and going to your next destination. And another thing you need, you look for uh, after identifying where you want to go is how to, go, how to get there. How fast can you get there? Uh, do I need to ride a metro? Do I need to ride a taxi or can I rent a car? So similar to the value stream, it is, the import, it is important that uh, you know where you are, which is your current state, where we are, or where we want to go, which is our future state, and how we get there as fast as we can, which is our improvement roadmap. This is how we create value stream map before the pandemic. I actually miss this event. Uh, we usually use post-its, yarns, flip chart, and we try to draw everything in front of everyone in the team. So it's really engaging and fun. But because of the situation, it doesn't stop us to, to go through our process and look at our value stream map. So right now we are doing it virtually. So, so, so in a virtual, in, the, in this virtual uh, value stream mapping, uh, we have a different option to, to continue our passion in mapping our value stream map with the help of some in, engaging system and application that uh, we use. Actually, for those of you, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this application, we actually are using Klaxon. So Klaxon is, is like you have a you have an unlimited workspace and you can use post it and everything you want to, to throw out in the board. Uh, it, it's it's really almost the same concept as how we do it face-to-face. Uh, -face. But uh, of course, we are still running it in a way uh, we want to do it. And it's still it's still fun, although it's virtually. We don't have that social... Uh, uh, we, we cannot meet each other face-to-face, -face, but it's still... Uh, it is fun and engaging. Next is accelerate growth. So in accelerating growth, it means sustaining the effort. This is where most of the organization fail because once you establish a lean manufacturing or a lean organization, the next step is how you're going to sustain it. And continuous improvement deployment is not a standalone program. It's a philosophy that should be integrated into the organization's DNA. My favorite philosophy of a continuous improvement is Kaizen. And it's actually a Japanese word, which means change, change for good or simply continuous improvement. And at Xylem, uh, we drive engagement and productivity. Kaizen is the one that drives our engagement and productivity. And we call it, we, 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 we actually compare it to, to the seeds we sow to let thousand, to, to, to let thousand flowers bloom in the future. So one of the usual Kaizen that we are doing in Xylem is we call the 313 Kaizen event. It's a multi-day CI event that we practice. Our Kaizen facilitators actually lead a three weeks planning. The, then they, they go to a one week actual event and they have a three months follow up to monitor the success of the project. So comparing to other projects where you usually need to spend three months or six months to complete the goal, the, the multi-day Kaizen event or the 313 Kaizen event is we're expecting result in five days. And here's a simple 313 Kaizen event that our production supervisor facilitated just recently with a huge amount of benefit. So you can see here how it improves our cycle time by 80%, how, we, how they reduce the full-time equivalent to 25%, and how they actually eliminate or reduce work in process to 90%. And each, each plant, manufacturing site, or uh, commercial site in Xylem is working on 313 Kaizen event, at least on a monthly basis. 
Here's another example. This one is more on transactional process. Uh, this is this is related to the order processing, where the team able to improve order processing from two hours to one hour. And you can see me in the background. I'm doing it virtually. Uh, this these are uh, some uh, fox in our asylum fox in Malaysia, and they were able to improve their their process to almost fifty percent reduction of their cycle time. And this uh, this has been uh, implemented and being sustained for the past months. And of course, the Kaizen event is the things that we do to make big changes, improvements, or rapid changes in the process. But we always remember the things that we can do immediately. We call it what bugs us, what bugs you, and how do you going? To, how are you going to fix it? So we make Kaizen fun. Uh, who doesn't wa want to work in a fun environment that sometimes you forget that you are really working? I'm sure you are all familiar. Last 2016, there's there's this craze about uh, Pokemon Go. So last 2016, I launched the concept of Kaizen Go application, uh, which is now called the Point Kaizen around Silem. So I'm very proud of this of this idea because I started this concept and it's now being used uh, around Silem. Uh, all around the, the asylum facilities around the world. So during that time, uh, when people are people are crazy about Pokemon Go, right? When when I go out of the office, I saw some of our assemblers, operators, uh, during their break time, holding their phones and walking around the parking area looking for these cute monsters. So I, I, I thought of the idea of why instead of our employee looking for these cute monsters and catching them through their smartphones, why not look for ways and share action on how to eliminate them. And as Pokemon Go application becomes unpopular after a few months, this point Kaizen or Kaizen Go is still uh, is still being popular and still being implemented across Asylum around the world. So it's a simple solution. It's a simple improvement where we are given, we are empowering our employee to look for ways and fix it. So just one example here. This is an example of a point Kaizen report that was submitted by our assembler operator. So you can, they, can, they can use their cell phone. There's an application. They can take picture. They can input what are the before state, what are the actions they have done, and how does it improve their process. So this is very simple. Before, when he is trying to uh, change the, the drill bit for this machine, he need to align it. He need to go through the X, Y, Z axis and try to move it until he make the the, the right uh, the right datum for for the for the for the uh, drilling process. And what he did is he just make a simple jig that actually uh, create a direct contact between the drill bit and that jig to to establish that alignment. So from almost thirty minutes setup, he was able to reduce it to three minutes just by his own, just by his creativity and his idea. So our formula in baking continuous improvement culture into the organization's DNA is we are building it like a lean ecosystem. So the concept is simple. Uh, the concept is simple for, for us. Uh, lean production is not a standalone. It's, it's not a standalone system. When we talked about uh, lean production, you will not talk about, uh, when you talked about continuous improvement, uh, uh, organization or continuous improvement deployment, it's not all about lean production. It should be driven by lean management. So wh what does it mean? So let's take a look at, at the analogy of this sports car. So this sports car is a top of the line system, has a top of the line system. And we all know that a car is not being bought just to display. It has to meet its function to transport the owner from place he wants to go fast and sound. So in lean ecosystem, the structure follows the same idea as a car. The car has an engine to drive the power. It has a gas and pedal and steering wheel to navigate the direction. It has a transmission to shift the gear. And of course, it has the fuel that supplies the energy to the car. So in the lean ecosystem, we have a leader standard work, which drives, us, which drives the process. We have the daily accountability that set the direction we have the visual control that communicates the objective to our people. 
And finally, of course, the discipline and engagement of the people that acts as a fuel and supplies energy to the organization. So let's have a closer look how, how it looks like. In a lean organization, there's a lot of gains that the team are working on to improve the process. So for example, you started your lean organization in your, in your company, you will see a lot of improvements. But the problem is, which we experience, there are some, uh, the problem is there, there's always a force of habit that creates the gravitational pull to go back to your old ways. That's very common to us, right? Every time we try to improve, at the end of the day, we cannot sustain it and it goes, we, it, we will drag back to the same old situation. This is where the leader's standard work take over. So a leader should develop a standard work that provides a structure and routine that help leaders shift from sole focus on result to dual focus on both process and result. So this is how we try to encourage our leaders to be part of that process, to be part of, the, of that system. And building culture of continuous improvement is the start with asylum leaders and works its way to everyone. So if you're a leader in asylum, uh, I'm talking here of the senior leaders uh, from our CEO to his direct report. Leading for continuous improvement is our starting point for our senior leaders to understand their role in continuous improvement. If we don't get the buy-in from these leaders, then probably the continuous improvement is not something that you can just roll out to all your employee. We need our leaders to be on top of this. So we train them to see ways. We develop value stream mapping and learn the philosophy and method of our asylum production system. And they're expected to roll these skills and knowledge to their organization. So at, after this training, they are not just a leader, they are also a coach and mentor of our continuous improvement initiative. And they are owning it. Visual control is our focus on the process that make it easy to compare expected versus actual performance. And we have it, and we actually develop an autonomous team that drives the visual management. So people in Salem are not dependent on the instruction given by anyone, given by other person, since everything is obvious, every, you can see everything. Everything is, uh, is being delivered uh, through these visual controls. So all they can need to do is to act and solve the problem. So this is one example of how, how we create our uh, leader standard work for, for our organization. Uh, when you go to, to some of the offices in Salem, you can see in, in front of their uh, office doors, they have the standard work. These are the leaders. But right now, since uh, during the pandemic, uh, we develop a standard work also using a system where, where they can actually bring it uh, through their smartphone or even through, 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 through access through the internet. Uh, and the objective is for the leaders to go to the line, go to the process, try to understand what support is needed by the organization. And you can imagine how, how powerful the leader standard work every time the employee are seeing their leaders uh, walking around, asking how are they doing? What can I do to help and support you? This will really change a lot of uh, initiative and engagement from our team. And uh, and and of course, uh, when when, you, when we create that uh, leader standard board, when we create that visual board, visual board, what follows is the accountability. So when you when when you develop a a process, you need to make sure that everyone in the organization is accountable for it. So our accountability is very visual. When you go to the sites, either commercial sites or manufacturing site at Silem, you can see that all leaders have their accountability board. You can see what are the tasks they need to complete for the day. What are the requests coming from our operators, assemblers that they need to give attention? These are all written here and they try to close and support this. This is how we do the, 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 day, the, the daily management. Uh, this is a typical uh, days in Salem where the plant manager stand in front of the accountability board and talks to all the senior leaders or senior managers in the plant or in the in the commercial team to talk about what have transpired over the days in terms of safety, quality, delivery, inventory, and productivity, and how we can address all this issue. 
So this is leading the, the improvement in terms of how we manage it on a daily basis. And uh, these are some few examples of how we are doing it now. So moving back to this photo, you can see it's a face-to-face -face, uh, daily management meeting. Uh, but this time, by the way, you can observe that our daily management meeting is being done and not in the meeting room. And people are actually standing up to, to get all the attention and uh, understand what are the important things that the, the, uh, during the discussion. And then, uh, but right now, since uh, during the pandemic, we don't, we don't have any other choice but to do it in virtual uh, situation or virtual scenario. So we are still using the Klaxon. I'm not promoting this, this software, by the way, but, but this is the current system that, that, that we are using and it, it's, it's effective for us at, as of the moment. So we still do the accountability board. We still have the SQDIP discussion for our plan and all the ownership and the actions need to be com uh, completed within the day is being tracked uh, using this board virtually. Okay. And so we talked about we talked about the uh, leader standard work, the visual management, and then the accountability. And the fourth element of that leadership lean management is this is my favorite, the humble leaders. So if you can see this picture, uh, the person that the, the person standing sweeping the floor here is actually the managing director of this plant. So part of his standard work every morning is he go to the line and help the assemblers and the operators clean the facility. So in Xylem, most of, most of our facilities, we don't have janitor service. It's our employee, it's our leaders, all together help each other to clean our facility. And this is how effective a humble leader looks like because when a leader is humble, when a, when, when a leader is... Uh, is humble to, to, to the organization is humble and the organization will will obviously see it uh the, the concept of a, a lean leaders is being humble and also uh being generous in terms of giving feedback and 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 giving uh rewards and recognition to the team when we establish this kind of leadership what happens next is a vortex of creativity and buy-in to the organization so you can you can feel that if the leaders is doing it, if the leaders are showing their support, if the leaders are actually getting their hands dirty, literally, but it cannot it can also be a, a, something that represent how how you talk to your people, how you try to understand what are the pain points that uh, you need to 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 support them. So that the change in the organization's culture totally changed. 360 degree. So, so it will really totally change how people perceive what continuous improvement all about. And of course, we reward our people. So in Xylem, in a different uh, facilities, in a different commercial team, we have a yearly uh, Xylem rec recognition day. It's all about continuous improvement rewards. It, it's all about uh, giving rewards to the best projects, best point Kaizen, best leader, uh, standard work leaders, and everything. But of course, because of the pandemic, uh, this job changed. But still, we still managed to give some rewards and recognition in Xylem for, for our employee around the world. And probably I just want to share with you uh, a video showing how we recognize projects and Kaizen event or improvement projects from, from the organization. So let me just share the video. Hi, my name is Thomas Wolf and I'm a senior scheduler at, for the production of wastewater pumps and mixers in Emmaboda, Sweden. And I'm Erik Rosenlund, an order specialist also in Emmaboda. Both our teams knew we had a problem with order changes that was disrupting our production process. Each order change decreases productivity and increases the cost of material and labor. Worse still, sales could be affected if customers' orders were not corrected. Even though we knew that the problem existed, we were not sure to what extent it affected our production. The first step we had to take was to visualize the problem and find a way to measure it. Our teams began to log the cause of each order changes. This showed us 
how big our problem was. With almost 500 order changes in three months, we addressed this issue by planning a virtual continuous improvement event with team members from France, Italy, Sweden, and Switzerland. As part of this SIA event, we used the Gemba Walk approach, where we went through actual cases of order changes to break down each step in this process. Together, we brainstormed each step asking, why is it done this way? With this method, we tracked issues to find root causes for reducing the number of order changes. Our cross-functional team generated over 60 ideas for improvements. As a team, we voted and prioritized the top nine areas. We have already taken several actions to simplify and standardize processes, resulting in a reduction of order changes, saving 450,000 US dollars in our first six months. We continue to improve our processes by looking at the entire supply chain, starting with R&D and sales to find new improvements to improve the efficiency of our processes. Now, our customers are experiencing fewer delays and quality issues, and the partnership between our teams is much stronger, and there is less stress associated with rework, waste and downtime. All right, so that is how we recognize our employer right now. We don't stop recognizing them because we believe that, uh, in as I mentioned earlier, when it comes to continuous improvement, uh, we need to be very generous in giving rewards and recognition to our employee of all their effort uh, with related to their process improvement. So finally, uh, to start the journey, just to summarize what I have just shared, uh, always begin with a vision, with a purpose, Always fix what bugs you. This is a, a very simple, uh, an, a very simple concept on how you can grow and improve yourself. Don't let perfect get in the way of better. And for the leaders, get your hands dirty. Uh, show your your sh show a, a humble leaders to your organization. And always remember that how we can that the objective for asylum is and probably the one that I would like to share to all of you is. Uh, always remember that things of how we can improve the quality of life of people around us. And that will really make a big difference when it comes to continuous improvement implementation. And finally, water is never static, never are we. So we are pushing forward, pursuing the opportunity of a lifetime to harness the power of new technologies and transform water for our customers and the people and to our community that we serve. So we are silent and we are solving water. Thank you very much. Okay. Hello. I think I'm on mute. <laughs> Thank you very much once again, Engineer Lloyd, for a very comprehensive and insightful presentation. I subscribe to the ideas that you have presented. And um, PSQ Nation, did you learn something new in today's session? If yes, type in yes in the comment box. We will wait for the feedback coming from our participants, from our viewers watching via YouTube and Facebook. And before we proceed to the question and answer, Engineer Lloyd, we are excited to invite everyone on the forthcoming 2021 National Quality Forum. Please watch this short clip. All right. We hope to see everybody on October 15 for the National Quality Forum. At this juncture, our participants can now share their key takeaways and answer their uh, questions. Just type in your comments, just type in your questions, and we will flash them on screen. Engineer Lloyd, this is our first question coming from Van. How do we implement effectively the root cause analysis via Gemba? 
this time at this time of new normal and do you recommend to use some drone cctv and gopro yeah this is a good question actually uh one of the vital characteristic of a continuous improvement practitioner is being creative so in, yes. in continuous improvement it's limitless you can you can think of any idea you wish to use just to support and help your process and the only reason the only problem is sometimes uh probably using drones or cctv or gopro will be very expensive so about some other company if you can afford that's good but in Salem, uh we actually utilize the creativity of our people what we are actually doing is uh in 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 in, in the actual line uh we actually have a a3 problem solving board that they actually fill in every time they encounter problem so if they encounter problem the assemblers will stop uh, producing their their process go to the we call it the, the obeya room they go to the obeya mm -hmm. room and start to do their problem solving but in a in a in a virtual situation in a virtual scenario yeah it, this is this is a, some good idea and actually the the same thing that we are using klaxon the, the one that i just mentioned is very convenient for us because actually klaxon is like a a room that I can always visit, and whatever I posted there will be there forever and, and until I, I erase it. So, so it, it's like I have a big whiteboard in my cell phone or in my laptop that I can always visit. And this is our venue in terms of root cause analysis at this moment, where we cannot see each other face to face. Wow, that's interesting, Engineer Lloyd. Another question from Jeanette Ramos Gonzalez. For you, what are the most important attributes of successful leaders today? Actually, I already mentioned one, which is I, I really, uh, I always look at it as the attribute of successful leader is being a humble leader. You, you need okay. to be humble. You need to, to understand the pain points of your process, mm -hmm. of your people, of your organization. You need to be generous enough to, to, to recognize people because when, when you try to be humble and you try to be generous in terms of recognition and what's that the lean management is all about, uh, th there, th there, there's no criticism, there, there's no jealousness in the organization. Mm -hmm. Everybody feels that they are being given credit when it's you. Mm -hmm. That's one, that's the number one. The, the, the second one is being courageous. I, I think uh, we need a courageous leaders that really, um, we, we, leaders are not, are, are not, built i always i always believe that it's a choice it's as a leader it's 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 a choice that everyone can become a leader by just making sure that you look at uh, the person on your left and the person on your right and make sure you are trying to protect them so being a humble leader and a courageous leader will probably for me is the attribute of a success, successful leader today wow thank you so much internal Lloyd. i subscribe to that idea so to recap, those are two attributes, be courageous and be humble, okay, for you to become a very successful leader. Another question from Ms. Grace Osito, are there any challenges encountered when Xylem started applying the practices that you have discussed and what have been done to overcome these challenges? A lot, a lot of challenges. It's, it's, it's not, it's not a, a continuous improvement is a journey, we all know that. And when you when you go through a journey, you experience a lot of barriers. The only thing that uh, we, we are probably successful, why despite of all these challenges, we are still uh, moving forward, continuous improvement organization is we try to accept our mistake. We try to learn from it, understand what we can do to make it better. And as I mentioned earlier, we don't let perfect get in the way of better. So if there's an idea that comes out, we try to initiate, we try to see how it works. And then if we think that doesn't work, then we stop it and we think of a better idea. So that's that's the small concept that we usually do. Another thing is when we take that buy-in to our leaders. Uh, for me, the, 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 the picture of continuous improvement is always top down in terms of how we develop that vision and up down in terms of execution. So if the leaders are really uh, serious about continuous improvement and aware of all the barriers that will come in the way, then he will be ready to chat to all these challenges. 
And probably if I can be very more specific, uh, the most common challenges that we encountered in Salem is uh, the sustainability, which I also presented mm -hmm. earlier. And that's the reason why we developed the leader standard work. Thank you so much, Engineer Lloyd. Yes, I agree. I agree also. In any business excellence framework, you always have to get the buy-in of them of the of a top management. Otherwise, the project will not uh, move forward. And uh, yes, we have to also learn from our mistakes. Another from Muhammad, Doctor Lloyd. Thank you for your nice presentation. And the question is: Could you please share a lean assessment contents, if possible? Yeah, first of all, uh, I, I would like to become a doctor, but unfortunately, I'm not. <laughs> that's, that's my next aspiration, but thank you, Mohamed, for, for that, for giving me that advanced uh, uh, title. Uh, Claim it, engineer lawyer. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah uh, in terms of the lean assessment, I, I, I don't really, I'm not sure if I understand the question well, but. I'm not sure if this is asking about a specific uh, lean assessment content or, or yeah, because uh, what, what I would say is in Xylem, probably I can share, share some example. In Xylem, we have this Xylem production system. Uh, mm -hmm. This is good about quality and continuous improvement, right? Uh, there's no copyright problem when, when we try to copy other uh, organization on how they <laughs> improve their process. And that's what, what I love about uh, lean manufacturing. Uh, we, we, we actually copied the concept of the Toyota production system, but we called it the Xylem production system. And a part of that is uh, we are working on a maturity assessment for our sites. Uh, I'm leading that uh, with, with my current role. What we are doing is we set up criteria of how, how, how you can define what is a good lean manufacturing, what is a good lean transactional process, what is a, a good lean commercial process. And uh, we try to do assessment on each of these sites, and we try to share best practices across the team. So it, it's very comprehensive. Uh, 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 how do you do lean assessment? So we do it actually. We, we, we go to the site, we, we develop the criteria, we ask all the questions, we ask all the the it, it's like a single price uh type of assessment right yeah there, there are tip, for example in continuous improvement we talked about the leadership we talked about visual management we talked about uh uh 5s kaizen event and all these things so we have a specific uh rules direction and philosophy that built into that criteria and we try to go through the sites and try to assess how they are how it's being done but on top of that, we also look at the organizational metric, how, how, how all these improvements relates to their business metric. Because we don't want to have all the effort of continuous improvement where, in fact, your on-time delivery is very low. So it doesn't make sense, right? So we try to look at the business metric and we try to look on how they apply things based on the criteria that we are setting. Wow, you have a very interesting approach, yes. <laughs> okay. Another question from Renzi May Patino. Has there any challenges or benefits from the transition from physical to virtual monitoring as we are now adopting to the new normal? Yeah, there, there's a lot of uh, challenges and benefits. I'll start with the benefit. The, 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 the benefit right now of the virtual process that we are doing is uh, it becomes limitless. Like before, we, we, we can only do probably Kaizen event like like uh, probably once a week uh, because we need to consider the location, we need to consider the transportation. And every time we do Kaizen event, uh, we're talking here of different organization going together in a room or working and the schedule will be very, sometimes very challenging. But right now, <laughs> Every day, uh, I, I will receive an email asking for a Kaizen event uh, from different parts of the world that I actually don't need to travel. <laughs> I can just open my laptop and start, and start the process. But I, I don't find it benefit for me because <laughs> it, it, it's, it's really very, very tedious as a facilitator because you, you really need to run a lot this time. And yeah, but, but generally, that, that's, that's, that's what we get in terms of benefit of the virtual monitoring. 
I, I felt that we become more productive in a way that uh, we are not considering right now more of the resources, but we just focus on the process. And the challenges is probably, you know, if, if, if this pandemic ends, I still would like to go back to the face-to-face -face and probably we will develop a hybrid process that will, a, will be able us to use the technology that we are using right now as a virtual uh, process versus the face-to-face -face because I always like to see people, how they react, how they smile, how they feel <laughs> frustrated in every opportunities that we do. Yes, Engineer Lloyd, the world now is borderless. Yeah. <laughs> you can be from one point to another in just one snap. <laughs> okay, from Shepo Zuarez, normally, how much time and effort should be given to continuous improvement in a workday? Yeah, I'm not exaggerating, but it should be every single hour, every single time. So, so the concept of continuous improvement, this is the, the, the true concept of continuous improvement, but we are not yet there. We are not there yet in Xylem. While you are working, you're experiencing problems, pain points, things that bugs you, and the brain of the person working should already generating some creativity. How can I fix this? How can I fix this? So, so it's a process that you should be always thinking every day, every single minute while you are working. But probably to answer your question, if you were given some opportunity on how to fix it, like I, probably I understand the question that while you are doing your work, you are already having this creativity in mind on how to improve your process. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, you will do some actions to execute it. And yeah, there's no there's no measurement on that. Uh, if I'll be very specific in some uh, in, in our organization, we actually give time to our employee uh, in the morning and in the afternoon before they go home to do some continuous improvement activity. But you know what is uh, inspiring and su uh, surprising to our employee? Our, our work starts, especially, for example, here in the Philippines, our work starts at 8 o'clock. People come to work at 7.30 or sometimes 7 o'clock to do continuous improvement. So, so it's already a mindset. It's already something that they want to do because they know if they will be able to create this improvement, their, the quality of their work will become better, will become faster. So they really take so that effort. It's not being dictated by the management. It comes naturally to the employee. Wow, that's so nice. So it's a way of life already. Okay, yeah. Another question from Mr. Ronald Ditche. How do support groups like the human resource, logistics, accounting, and facilities level up or sync with lean manufacturing? So, so when it comes to when it comes to lean manufacturing, so the, the question is very specific on the lean manufacturing. Uh, when it comes to the lean manufacturing, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's it's not about it's it's not just about the the operation or the production. The, the totality of the lean lean when you talk about lean manufacturing is the including the support group. So when we, when I talk about the leader standard work earlier, I'm just I'm not just talking of the production manager. I'm talking of the HR manager, logistic manager, accounting manager that goes to the line, that goes to the gemba, and try to visit the line and see how they can support each other. Like for, if you are an HR per, uh, manager, uh, our HR manager will go to the line to do his her standard work to ask employee if there are some uh, problems about uh, related to HR that he, she can she can support. Uh, mm -hmm. If you are a logistic manager, you will probably look at the opportunity to look on the is the supply that is being transported to your uh, line is sufficient enough or or mm -hmm. uh, and things like this. So so uh, we will always look at the production as as the, the heart of our manufacturing lean manufacturing, but but the brains and all the the the, the parts will be coming from this function, and that's how how we try to level up and support that. Okay, so everybody is into uh, yeah. the, the yeah. approaches. Okay, so those are the questions raised by our uh, participants. Another one from Mom Salve or Donia. Yes, started our CI journey in healthcare to good industry practice. A comment from Grace Sasita. Sustainability is a tricky thing yeah. to the force yeah. of habit. Yeah, I agree. I subscribe to that too. Okay, so at this juncture, may we request our participants to uh, 
scanned, we will be uh, showing you the QR code. This is already flashed in your screen for the post evaluation survey. So, and consent form. Kindly evaluate the activity today and all our participants who accomplished the survey or the post evaluation survey and consent form will be given a certificate by our secretariat through email. Okay, now we would like to present a certificate of appreciation to our resource speaker for imparting valuable insights and inspiration to the participants during the webinar titled Driving Continuous Improvement in the Challenging Times held on July 16, 2021, signed by the Society's President, Dr. Ray from Estat. The Philippine Society for Quality awards the Certificate of Appreciation to Engineer Lloyd R. Sesse. Thank you. Once thank again, you. thank you so much, Engineer Lloyd. I'm sure we have, our participants have learned a lot from your discussion. Yeah, and thanks a lot. I actually enjoyed the, this discussion and hopefully I was able to uh, give some inspiration and impart some of the knowledge about continuous improvement and hoping that everyone on the past will become successful in the pursuit of uh, improve, uh, continuous improvement and quality. Yes, let's claim that. <laughs> Okay, at this point, may I present to you the Philippine Society for Qualities Activities for 2021, for the rest of the 2021. True to our vision, PSQ is continuously providing relevant training and certification activities which are responsive to the needs of the industries. And we have invited quality gurus throughout the years. We have partnered with different local and international organizations for collaborative projects which will greatly benefit our members. And we also facilitate the different awards, and we are very excited to invite you in the 32nd National Quality Forum. Please mark your calendar. This will be held this coming October 15, 2021, from 9 o'clock in the morning to 4 o'clock in the afternoon, Manila time, with the theme emerging stronger than ever shaping the future of quality and if you would want to sponsor this activity please do call our secretariat please get in touch with our secretariat and of course another learning opportunity for our members we have another general membership meeting and ugnayan event event this is a benchmarking and learning event this coming august 13 so again mark your cal calendar this will be held on August 13, 2021, and our host company is Infosys. And if you want, if you are a writer or if you want to share something about your uh, about your best practices, about your quality events, about the, your awards or productivity or anything related about quality, like uh, Industry 4.0, Quality 4.0, Society 5.0, we are going to launch our first official publication that is called PSQ Nation, you can submit your articles at our secretariat. And of course, we have another training this coming August 11 and 13, Mastering Customer Journeys. So please, that is this uh, August 11 and 13 and another masterclass in design thinking this coming August 5 and 6. And all this will be done virtually. And another masterclass in digital and culture transformation, practical frameworks and applications this coming September 16 to 17. And uh, if you want to be a certified DPO, please register. This will be held this coming August 2, 4, 6, 9, and 11 of the 20, 2021. And another training from Dr. May Kachalian, Problem Solving Tools for Accurate Decision Making, this coming September 7 to 8, 2021. We have a lot of trainings for you, and Dr. May has set uh, aside her schedule for the different training activities for the PSQ, like this one, the Practical, Statistical, and the so good, the Cultural-Based uh, uh, Approach to Total Quality Management, and also the Selection, Training, and Calibration of Sensory Panelists. We also have statistical process control for quality monitoring by Dr. Me and his partner. And if you would like to be part of the Philippine Society for Quality, if you want to be part of the PSQ Nation, please join us and get in touch with our secretariat. You can uh, get in touch through the following social media platforms of the 
Philippine Society for Quality. And we have come to the end of our webinar this afternoon. Thank you very much for all of you here, especially to our participants and our resource speaker. And this has been your host, Dr. Zandra N. Maninas, the Vice President for Philippine Quality Award Administration of the Philippine Society for Quality, saying thank you and see you in the next webinar session. Thank you.